Hi everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. So today the topic is Salesforce API authentication and authorization step by step. In this video, we will see what are the difference between authentication and authorization. Then we will try to create a connected app in Salesforce so that we can do a authentication using auth flow and then we'll try to understand what is Salesforce access token and why it is required to do all the transaction like inserting records accessing records etc in Salesforce then we'll try to understand the composite API which is very helpful to avoid multiple calls to Salesforce that means using the composite API in a single call we can do multiple transactions okay now I am in my Salesforce home screen. Here, what I'll do is in setup, quick find, I'll try app manager. Once I'll click on app manager, I have two options over here new lightning app, new connected app. New lightning app is basically for uh, UI application, but here we are going to create a connected app for integration. So click on new connected app. Provide a connected app name, for example, I'm saying integration app. Uh, name you can it can be auto populated, but you can provide any name differently if you want. Contact email ID I'm going to do test.selfos.com. Then uh, this is very important section over here API enable auth setting. So click on that. Here you see HTTP colon double slash. Here actually you have to provide the callback URL. That means once the authentication done, where it should land. That means it should land in a home screen or where it you wanted to land, right? That callback URL. But as I am going to use it just for integration purpose, so I can do like my callback URL okay yeah uh, two important things we need to select from this selected auth scope one is manage your data this this is very important don't provide full access and all those things and the second thing what I am thinking of is taking this refresh token so two things I have taken, one is API, another is refresh token offline access. So that refresh token is basically something you can use it next time onwards to exchange and get the access token. I think almost I have done. I'll leave other things as it is. Click on save. Click on continue. You can see callback URL cannot be HTTP URL. So what I can do is uh, I can give HTTPS, okay, and try to save. Continue. Okay, now it is saved, but it will take some two to ten minutes of time to activate right so in between i have some other things to do so for authentication we need username we need password we need security token i know my username i know my password so one more thing what i wanted to do is i wanted to generate my security token click on my profile icon then open the setting in a new tab here in left hand side uh, my personal information section you are able to see reset my security token if this option is coming that means you are eligible for adding a security token with your password or concatenating a security token with your password if this option itself not coming don't worry your password is enough no need of security token that means your ip address is whitelisted so click on reset my security token click on reset security token once so you'll see that you know it's saying that you'll get a security token in your email what i'll do is i'll go back i'll check here you see this is the latest email i got 
so i'll copy this thing the security token what i'll do is here i i was not having the security token that's so now i have my username i have my security token i have my password another two things i need is consumer key and consumer secret that consumer key and consumer secret that i can get it from my connected app which i have created so let's go there refresh it okay copy the consumer key from here why i am keeping all these things is because we need all the information and i also need the consumer secret so consumer secret is by default not visible you have to click on this click to reveal then copy this paste it over here okay so that means username security token password consumer key consumer secret is available to get the access token i have to fire api call to selfos for that my endpoint url will be as it is login.selfos.com service slash auth 2 slash token only thing is if you are doing it against a sandbox you change this login to test that's all remaining thing will be as it is the method i am going to use is post i will not use gate or put anything else i will use post client id this client id is nothing but the consumer key over here so copy the consumer key and replace it here client id is nothing but your consumer key and this client secret client secret is nothing but your consumer secret okay copy it paste it okay then redirect uri redirect uri if you remember i have given redirect uri here is uh, oh here redirect uri my callback url https so that one you put it over here okay and your password password so i told you one thing either if security token is not available for you then only the password will work okay if the security token is also there you have to concatenate your security token along with your password that means this concatenation will happen right inside of your password okay then the username username you copy it from here okay and provide it here and grant type this is just a hard coded text password nothing to do with that okay now we are ready to fire the call to selfos and get the access token so for that we need a rest client any rest client is fine any xyz rest client but for me the common thing what i can do is commonly used rest client postman i have already installed it in my chrome or you can also do it in your desktop application okay i am going to put the endpoint url then the body this body what you have to do is you have to click on raw because we we don't wanted to key value pair we wanted to do it here raw. okay this body we are going to provide a raw body over here so for that what i am going to do i am going to copy all the thing over here copy paste it okay adjust it little bit so that you don't have any space or anything like that okay i think that is fine we have the url we have the body provided now let's send it unsupported grant type okay that invalid grant type error was coming because of there are some uh, white space over here so that's why it was not clearly visible to me and uh, we are not able to get that so the best thing is just bring this thing if you are getting some kind of error like that just bring it to some notepad plus plus or something 
and try to join the line and see and make sure that in between this equal to in between this uh, upper send uh, for example here right upper send if, if there is a space over here like this okay then it may create some problem make sure that there is no space it should exactly look like the way it was looking like over here and it will just copy paste the same thing again let's say here i'm in postman and what i'll do is i'll send this request and you see over here i am getting the access token so this is this is what in a response i am getting i am getting this access token okay and what i am going to do as well is for your reference i will copy that body as well so that you may not get the exact body but what you have to do is you have to replace it with your client id and client secret then only it will work otherwise it will not work even though i am copy paste the body over here but you should make sure that you know you you populate these values right over here right all those dynamic values correctly i think uh, it's almost we are almost done with getting the access token the next step what we will do is we will try to insert a record using that access token what we received over here as part of the composite api okay as i was explaining composite api helps in multiple ways creating uh, different different records and uh, also linking the dependency for example here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an account first the account name i'm going to set as google account and with this google account i am going to create a contact as well which says that you know prasanta kumar parthi but how this prasanta kumar parthi will link with the account here is the account id which is dynamically linked with the reference reference means this new account is the reference for this account google account which i'm going to create if you can see here the new account is the reference for this account and this same new account which i'm going to reference here as well while creating the contact this is how what i can do is i can link both the account and contact which are going to be created so let's see so now to save the time i have already created some uh, endpoint url etc so i'll just copy paste it to postman so i'm going here and let's say i'm going to create a new request i'll make this request type as post i'll paste the endpoint url over here then the second thing what i'll do is uh, i'll mark this method as post it's now oh, okay it's already marked as post so no problem so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set this header authorization header so this authorization header basically if you remember on the first attempt when we try to log into selfos using the client key client secret username password etc so at that time we get the access token the same access token we are going to provide here in the header so the key will be authorization you will see over here the value will be this is a hard coded text bearer and this is the dynamic session id or the dynamic access token which we got in our previous step so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy paste this thing so to make sure this is the access token you see here in the first attempt when we do the login call if you remember so we we get this access token by providing the client id client secret all those things we got this access token this access token we are going to use in our subsequent request for authorization so for that purpose you cannot simply put the access token you also add this barrier and give a white space then provide this access token then this will work now copy i'll copy paste so now the next thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to set the body i'm going to do the raw body setup so i am going to copy the entire body over here paste it and now we are ready so what we 
did over here is we set the endpoint url okay one important point to notice over here if you will see this endpoint url is no longer login or test.salesforce.com this endpoint url is is a complete url this url where we got this url the base url we got in the first request itself while getting the access token we get the base url this base url we are going to leverage in our subsequent request over here the base url will be always fixed after that any relative urls you wanted to add you can add for composite uh, api the relative url is service.data but one thing to note over here this 46 version will not work i am going to change it to 50 because this composite api works like 49 onwards or something like that so for the safer side i am going to change it to 50 okay now i am going to execute this okay some error we are getting over here you know what while doing the copy paste we do mistake like white space and all those things see over here there is a white space between authorization right we have to remove this white space then again we have to send it okay the next error we are getting on media type what we are going to do is we are going to add one more header called content type this content type if you'll see in our body we are setting a json it's not a plain text so what i can do is i can set it as content type you can do like uh, okay application slash json okay so content type should be application slash json because in body we are sending the json uh, that's fine and one more thing you see over here we did a mistake we we by mistake forget to add a comma over here okay so that's fine now execute oh great now you see now we see the account and contact both got created okay now what we can do is we can go back to our self host instance we can click on app menu type account over here because we created the account you see this is the account we created click on that and you see this is the contact also we created along with that account we have not provided any email or phone number so only name we provided but rest of the information you also provide similarly adding more attributes to the json string i hope you would have enjoyed this session this is a complete session starting from authenticating to selfos and getting a authorization token or the access token and do a subsequent call to Salesforce to create account and contact through that access token. If you want anything additional, you can uh, provide your comment and based on that, I will try to create more videos. That's all for today. See you next time. Bye-bye.